Okay, today we're going to look at, again, AC 1.2, but this PowerPoint's going to concentrate on the Prison Service, Her Majesty's Prison Service, HMPS. Okay, let's go, let's go to move on. So, if you looked at the stuff on the Probation Service, you will know that the Prison and Probation Service are combined under one roof, of HMPPS, Her Majesty's Prison and Probation Service. So that's the government agency that's responsible for prisons in the UK. Uh, it's an agency of the, of the Ministry of Justice, so that's the um, area of Parliament that is concerned with prisons and probation. And it was created in 2004. And in 2004, the prison service was actually known as the National Offender Management Service, NOMS, but it changed its name in 2017 to HMPPS. So it used to be called that, and Her Majesty's Prison Service is part of Her Majesty's Prison and Probation Service, which is overseen by the Ministry of Justice. Hopefully that makes sense. So moving on. Well, what's its main role? Well, it's fairly obvious. This is a statement from the government website. Uh, basically, the role of the prison service is to keep anyone that's been sentenced to a prison uh, term in custody. But there's more to it than that. It's also ensuring they lead a law abiding and useful life, both in prison and after they've been released. So there is an emphasis on reform there in that statement. So broadly speaking, I think we could say that the prison service has three main aims. So obviously one of the aims there is to protect the public from criminals. So if someone is a highly dangerous criminal, you lock them up to protect the public from them. Uh, there's that emphasis on rehabilitation and becoming useful members of society at some stage. And then obviously they have to carry out the sentences that the court has, um, has given the convicted. Now, if we look at population, I've pulled out this um, this piece of data. We're in the middle of the COVID-19 outbreak at the moment. Uh, there's definitely been um, a case of um, the government releasing prisoners early to try and free up space. But you can see at the moment on Friday, the 19th of June, population, the prison population stands at just shy of 80,000. The vast majority of those are men, very few uh, females in there, and it's operational capacity. So what the government are saying is they've got space for, in the prison system, of about eight, just shy of 82,000 people. So effectively, we're, when, you, when people talk about the prison service being overcrowded, according to government statistics, we're not. Um, and here, this... Um, this um, section here, home detention curfew caseload, that's people who are um, have a, are detained, but they are detained at home, so they have a curfew, they'll be tagged, that sort of stuff. Um, IRCs are immigration remo uh, removal centres, so that's uh, uh, people who have flouted immigration laws. And um, you can see how that compares to last week and indeed 12 months ago, and you can see 12 months ago, the prison population was at 82,000, so uh, 3,000 more than at this time, uh, the, the year ago, 3,000 more than this time at the moment, although the operational capacity was slightly larger as well. So that gives you an idea of what sort of numbers we're looking at in the prison system. So funding, right, um, it's funded by the taxpayer, uh, the whole of Her Majesty's Prison Probation Service in 2018 received 4.6 billion. That's shared between prisons and probation. But in reality, the vast bulk of that is taken by Her Majesty's Prison Service. And the approximate budget there is £3.2 billion. Pounds. So that is what is spent on the prison system roughly each year. Now, that equates, so the latest figures, the 20, 2019 figures, uh, puts the price of keeping someone in prison for a year at £43,213. So that is £118 a day to keep someone in prison. And the key thing to remember there, and with all these things, finance and economics comes into it, if someone's in prison, 
they are not contributing to society in any way. So they're not earning, which means they're not paying tax, which means the government isn't getting money out of them. At the same time, they're not spending any money. And obviously, if you spend money on goods, goods have value added tax attached to them. So again, the government is generating income, which pays for hospitals, schools, roads, etc, etc. So anyone that is in prison is actually draining the country's finances, because they are not creating any wealth for the country. So you could argue it is not, well, you could argue, you definitely argue that it's definitely not economic sense for this country to have a high prison population because it costs a lot and on average if you compare the figures with um, other countries in Europe we spend more per prisoner uh, each year than other countries do for certain so um, I dug out this paper this is a House of Commons um, briefing paper on the prison state gives you a, an idea of um, of what uh, what the system's looking like at the moment. I've uh, put a link here for you. Uh, so if you're using the other PowerPoint that doesn't have the commentary, that will take you to an in-depth Excel spreadsheet that shows you all the prisons in the country, what category they are, um, how uh, whereabouts they are, uh, lots of information. So and you can filter that spreadsheet as you want if you want to do delve deep, deeper into this topic. So. We know that the prison system deals with high risk offenders. Obviously, they've got to be high risk because their crimes are considered unsuitable for their sentences to be served in the community. So anyone that goes to prison will automatically be deemed relatively high risk because their crimes are such that they cannot have a community sentence. It's more serious than that. So this paper I was referring to gave the following stats. So these are worth having a look at. So you've got 117 prisons in the country, one immigration removal centre and three secure training centres. And basically a secure training centre is, uh, is for young offenders, so prisoners up to the age of 17. And they're all run by Her Majesty's Prison Information Service. So um, 117 prisons, one immigration centre, three secure training centres. So about 121 there. Okay. You've got also, and it's always key to remember that, that there are 13 prisons that are operated by private companies. And the three companies that run those, and it's worth knowing what, um, at least the name of one of them for the exam, G4S run four of them, Serco run five of them, and Sodexo run four. And you'll notice the asterisks uh, after there. And I've put that asterisk in because Birmingham Prison used to be run by G4S but there was a really damning inspection report by Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Prisons, and it was so, thought to be so bad, the conditions there, that actually the running of that jail was taken away from G4S and moved back to the control of Her Majesty's Prison and Probation Service. So in, in the exam, you're asked to think about the funding of prisons and whether privately run prisons are viable. You can use the example of Birmingham Prison uh, as, as why sometimes people argue that private companies are not best suited to run the prison system. But it's a small proportion of prisons in general that are run by private companies. Okay, we shall move on. So male prisons are organised into four categories. You need to be familiar with what these four categories are, and I'm going to look at these in quite a bit of detail. So your first category are Category A prisons. And these are for prisoners who, if they were to escape, pose the most threat to the public, the police or national security. So these are the real hard cases. So they will be convicted of crimes like murder, attempted murder, rape, terrorism, etc. So the, the most secure prison is a Cat A, a Category A prison. And there are eight of these in the UK, uh, examples from Belmarsh in London or Manchester and Wakefield. But for us, the nearest category prison to Plymouth is Long Lartin in Worcestershire. Uh, it's got famous inmates such as Vincent Tabak. He's serving 20 years minimum life for the murder of Joanna Yates in Bristol in 2010. And also in there is Nathan Matthews, who's doing a 33 year minimum life sentence for the murder of Becky Watts. And later on the course, we will be looking at that murder. And that is what Long Lartin looks like very high secure, some really bad people are in there. 
also I might add that anyone that escapes from prison is very likely to move up no matter what their crime to a category A prison. So escapees tend to end up in category A prisons. The next category is category B and that's for prisoners who don't require maximum security but obviously you need to make escape very difficult for them. So that would be typically for those convicted of the same sort of offences as category A, so that's murder, rape, etc. But they're not as high risk. Uh, sometimes prisoners who've served a long time as a category A prisoner might be moved to a category B, category B prison uh, for good behaviour or rehabilitation. So category B prisons, well, we're looking at stuff like Wormwood Scrubs in London, Cardiff, uh, Parkhurst, which is on the Isle of Wight. But the nearest Category B prison to us is Exeter, which is a Category B, B prison. Okay, And there is Exeter prison for you to have a look at right in the centre of Exeter. We then move to Cat C. Uh, that's for inmates who can't be trusted in open conditions, but are, likely to, and, and, but are unlikely to try and escape. So that's for those convicted of minor offences, people of certainly shorter sentences. And it can also be for Cat B prisoners who are coming to the end of the sentence and are moving down the system, ready for release. And uh, those are uh, prisons such as Northumberland and Maidstone. But the nearest two to us are Dartmoor, which is in Princeton, obviously, and Channing's Wood, which uh, is the photo you see there. And that's in Newton Abbott. So we've got two Cat C prisons. There's Dartmoor for you. Lovely in the snow. Uh, we've got two Category C prisons near us. Channing's Wood in Newton Abbott and Dartmoor up on the moors in Princeton. But uh, there are currently plans to get rid of Dartmoor. It um, was originally built to house uh, prisoners in the Napoleonic War. So it is uh, well over, moving towards 200 years old. Uh, and very decrepit. So there's thoughts that that may in the end uh, uh, cease to be into existence. And we'll move increasingly to more, more modern prisons, such as the likes of Canada, Chang's Wood. And the final category we'll look at is open prisons. And those are for prisoners who can be reasonably trusted not to try and escape. And it says, does what it says on the tin, open. You know, you won't see a lot of walls. You won't see high security. Um, so these are people who are trusted they move the uh, inmates can move freely around the prison they often work outside the prison in the community or allowed short home visits for a set of number uh, for a set number of hours a week now um, to give you an example it's one of the most famous and i've put the i think i put it down here yeah um Her Majesty's prison ford um, my mother lives very near in fact i was brought up very near uh, this part of the world in sussex and my mother's church where she was the church warden was right next door to Ford Prison and I can remember the the choir for the church was made up of prisoners who would every Sunday walk from the prison to the church sing in the choir and walk back again they weren't escorted by prison officers that's what they did so an open prison much more privileges for the prison and really what you're looking at there is people who are low risk towards the end of their sentences getting ready to be rehabilitated into life on the outside world. So the nearest one to us in Plymouth is Lay Hill in Gloucestershire. And there is Lay Hill, as you can see, not exactly a lot of high fences and wire, etc. But the key thing also to remember here is I've deliberately given you where the prisons are near to us. If you were a prisoner serving time and you were coming to the end of your sentence and wanted to move to a Cat D, Gloucestershire is a good couple of hours drive away from Plymouth. So you would be a long way from friends and family. There are not a lot of open prisons in the country, as I said here, 10 um, solely category D prisons in the UK. So the issues surrounding getting people ready to go out into the big wide world having served their sentences, more category D prisons, it could be argued, are needed. OK, whilst we're on it, we'll have a little look about how life works in the in the prison. Uh, we touch on this in later assessment components, but I put it into this PowerPoint now. And the prison system tends to offer an incentives and earned privilege systems called IEPs. And that basically are rewards. So if a prisoner conforms, uh, they stick to the rules, they can earn incentives. So there are three basic levels. 
uh, three levels. There's basic, standard and enhanced. Uh, if you enter prison for the first time, you start on standard and then you can either, if you misbehave, move down to basic or if you do behave, up to enhanced. So basic prisoners move to this level if they don't obey the rules. And that basically means a loss of privileges. So that it does differ from Plymouth to Plymouth, um, Plymouth, from prison to prison. So that might include things like a loss of privileges. So no TV in your cells or you've got to eat your meals in your cells. You can't associate with other prisoners. As I said, the stand is where all prisoners uh, start. And that standard privilege might be able to you know, spend more of your money each week that you earn um, in, the, in the shop each week. Um, that's the sort of privilege you might get. And then enhanced you consistently obey the rules, then that's TVs, more visits, more gym time, etc. And this is um, something I dug up off the internet. Some of the things is a poster made by a prisoner of your enhanced choices. So this, as I said, it does differ from prison to prison, but you can see that there's book clubs, three extra visits a month and a family day, extra spends, uh, extra library sessions, super enhanced wings, option to buy games, consoles, DVD players, etc, etc, extra gym sessions. So all of these are designed to make prisoners conform and learn that good behaviour reaps its rewards, therefore conforming to what society expects. As with all these, um, all these ACs, we've got to know how the prison system works with other agencies within the criminal justice system. This is the final slide, so let's hopefully work out how this would work. So fairly obviously the prison service will work closely with the courts they, in a number of ways. They have to carry out the custodial sentence that the courts imposed. Um, they have to supervise anyone who is awaiting trial and remanded in custody. So that's people who are innocent in the eyes of the law but they've been refused bail so they are waiting in, on, waiting in prison before their trial comes up. And obviously they, that then means that the um, prison service would need to work even more with the courts because defence lawyers would need to visit their clients in prison prior to the court case. So it's not just carrying out the sentence for the courts, but it's also liaising with the courts of people on bail. Uh, sorry, people who've been running in custody have been refused for bail and for letting lawyers visit their clients. Obviously, they will also work with the police because if the police have got ongoing investigations, they may well want to question people who are either in custody or uh, are on remand. Uh, it helps in their investigations, so they will need to liaise with them. They obviously work very closely with the National Probation Service. Remember, they're in, in the same department because they've got to uh, liaise when a prisoner is going to be released on license, so they're out on parole or they're near the end of their sentence, so they're prepared and ready so that they don't end up straight back in to prison. And finally, even though these aren't agencies of the CJS, they will liaise with charities and pressure groups. So groups such as the Prison, prison Reform Trust and the Howard League for Penal Reform, who are constantly campaigning to improve the conditions for prisoners and life in prison in general. So they will work with those as well. Hopefully that's given you a rough idea of what the prison service does and how it operates. I hope you found it useful.